Rumors about budget SD0 bugs goggles started spreading last year. First, there were hints from the SD0 team about a more affordable model. Then, some unknown goggles started appearing in various YouTubers' videos. There were even early leaks, but they quickly disappeared from YouTube. And now, the official release SD0 Bugs Pro and SD0 Bugs Pro Plus. They come with a bright 100Hz screen, a built-in digital receiver, analog support and all the needed ports. Today we won't go through the list of specs, there are already plenty of reviews like that. Instead, we will do real-world tests. How does the HD0 Box Pro Plus handle obstacles? How stable is the signal at a distance? And what does the image really look like on the screen, in both digital and analog modes? Also, how does it compare to the more expensive HD0 goggles? Is it actually worse? But before we dive in, if you are enjoying FPV content like this, feel free to click like and subscribe. We will start our testing at one of the classic FPV spots in our region, an old abandoned factory. Freestyle pilots know this place well. Big concrete walls, several large rooms, broken structure and long gaps between buildings. Everything you need for training and testing gear. For today's test, I prepared two drones, one for digital test and one for analog test. The main one for HD0 is a freestyle drone with HD0 Freestyle VTX unlocked to 1W. It's a serious build, made for flying in tough conditions. The antenna is hidden inside a TPU mount. Yes, that affects the signal a bit, but it's close to how most people actually fly in real life. For the analog test, I put together a drone using spare parts I had lying around. It's a lightweight long-range quad on a 4-inch frame with a solid T-Rex camera and the TBS VTX set to 800 mW. Right now, it has an old, long antenna, not the usual setup. But during the test we will switch it to a small stubby antenna to match a typical freestyle build more. We will fly the drone from the main hall. This gives us a good setup to check signal penetration in different directions and through different materials – concrete, metal bars and open space – all in one place. There aren't many HD0 penetration tests online. That's because HD0 is mostly used for racing and technical freestyle, where the focus is on low latency and clear image around the track. But that's exactly why our test is interesting. We will see how far HD0 can really go with these goggles, and how well the built-in analog works too. Alright, let's start with the first test. As I said before, the drone is running a 1 watt transmitter and the camera records at 90 fps. Today. We want to see how well the new Box Pro keeps its signal. So, we'll compare it with the reference setup, its older brother goggles fitted with a strong antenna pack, two stabbies, a dual element antenna, and the popular TRC X Air patch used by many H0 pilots. The Box Pro, in contrast, is on stock antennas only, two patch antennas hidden inside the shell and two small sticks that come in the box. HD0 heard the complaints that early goggles shipped with no antennas at all, so this time they included these very basic ones. Actually, when it comes to both signal penetration and long-range work, patch antennas matter a lot. You can notice that during dropouts the signal survives only on antennas 2 and 3. Those are the built-in patches of the Box Pro. Overall, they do the job. If you are not chasing distance records or flying through crazy concrete buildings, you might keep them as they are. But they are not exactly great. As soon as we push a bit farther, everything is already close to the limit. Well, this part of the factor is pretty clear. Even with the stock antennas we can still fly. And the picture looks fine. It's not great, but it's okay. Let's make it harder and move to another hole where there are more obstacles and signal reflections. In this hole, you can see that as soon as we fly behind a few obstacles, the LEGO circular antennas, even the dual ones, lose the signal. The only picture we get comes from the patch antennas. In my view, the Box Pro's two built-in patches work just as well as the two RC patches, maybe even better. And keep in mind that two RC patches aren't cheap. Honestly, at the edge of range, even with these patches, I don't feel comfortable. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. 
Alright, let's jump to the next test. The DVR picture from the goggles and from the Box Pro is almost identical. Because both use the same HD0 video chip. HD0 simply doesn't have another one. So we run this test for two reasons. First, to be sure both systems work the same. And second, to see how well the different patches and stock antennas perform. Well, the test wouldn't be fair if we didn't swap the antennas. Now, the Box Pro used the Dual AX2 and the Stubby, plus its built-in patches. The goggles have to fly with the stock antennas that came with the Box Pro. As you can see, the image in the Box Pro is clearer now. Not a huge change, but noticeable. Still, to be honest, I expected more. Stock antennas are worse than the pricey ones, but still good enough. Only you can decide if spending another $50 on better antennas is worth it. What I really don't like is this. With the antennas attached, the Box Pro hardly fits into the small pouch that comes in the box. And even if you manage to fit it in, the antennas can snap while the Box Pro sits in your backpack. Unscrew them every time isn't a perfect answer either. I checked which SMR connectors HD0 uses. And they're rated for about 800 on the doves before the contact starts to weaken. To me, that's more a scary story than a real problem. But some pilots worry about it and pick a setup they never have to remove. With this setup, let's turn our attention to the analog module and see how it performs. The analog module in the Box Pro is really just a bonus to help you move from analog to HD0. That's why the receiver is single channel. Only the left antenna is active. Now we will check how well the signal gets through walls with two antenna options, the stock stubby and the dual AX2. Because I have only one Box Pro, I had to film the flights one after another, but I kept almost the same way each time. Honestly, the result surprised me. The image stayed very clean. I was sure the Box Pro analog model would fail in all that concrete, but it didn't. With just one antenna on analog, I can cover nearly the same area as HD0 with 4. And yes, classic analog noise appears, but you can still fly. In analog, though, the gap between the stock antenna and the dual AX2 is much bigger. That's expected. There are no built-in patches to smooth out the lower gain. And this is where the antenna difference really shows. The stock antennas just cannot handle this many obstacles. There is almost no picture. Even if you manage to fly here, it won't be much fun. In the second hole, the difference is even clearer. This is the far end, with an exit on the other side. With the stock antenna, you have no chance of flying out through the gate and still keeping video. The AX2, though the picture is pretty noisy, lets you leave the factory without losing signal. So if you plan to fly analog with anything larger than a tiny whoop, I would really suggest picking up at least one good antenna. Alright, concrete's done. Time to get some fresh air and find out how the Box Pro performs outdoors. I really wanted to set an HD0 long distance record. We had everything ready, a plane that can fly 80 km, plenty of antennas and enough batteries to make it happen. But the weather let us down thick, clouds made the signal much weaker, so the records will have to wait. Still, we did manage to test the Box Pro and the goggles side by side in the same conditions. If you would like to see a real long range test on clear day, write me in the comments. I'm still thinking about it.
back to the range test. If you are new to long range flying, here is a quick intro. Transmitter power is not the main thing. Antennas are. The better the antenna on the drone and on the ground, the farther you can go. So, if you want real distance, focus on antennas first, not on a high power WebEx. Because the Box Pro and the goggles use the same HD0 chip, let's see how the stock antennas perform. Here is Flight 1. Our plane has the same HD0 freestyle WebEx set to 1W. The Box Pro keeps its full stock setup, two built in patches and two small stock antennas. The patches, of course, are aimed at the plane. The goggles, in contrast, now have two traversy patches, one dual and one single circle one antenna. At this distance, the patches are the key antennas, so don't be surprised if the signal suddenly drops and then comes back. It's hard to keep your head pointed at exactly one spot. We sometimes drank and ate or stretched our necks. All our flights are fairly long, so we won't watch them start to finish. I'll skip ahead to the key moments for you. Even now, you can see extra video noise on the Box Pro, and the signal level is much lower. But overall, you can still fly. Problems start after about 2 km. Those clouds really interfere. Honestly, I wouldn't even call that a problem. This is a completely stock setup that holds signal up to 2 km. I expected a bit more from the patches, but 2 km already covers most drone tasks. At 4 km, the plane broke through the clouds, and the image came back briefly. But it didn't improve after that. So, what about the goggles? At 10 km the USD came through perfectly. The picture wasn't the most comfortable, but it was enough to control the plane at height. But at 14 km the OSD disappeared for good and the image suddenly got much worse, so we decided to end the test. 2 km with a completely stock box pro? That seems just fine. And 14 km using true receipt patches on the goggles? I don't know about you, but I think that's a fantastic result. But is it really just about the antennas? Let's set the Box Pro with two popular patch antennas that I got with my long range 4 inches drone. Let's fly and find out. As in previous time, we will only go through the key points. 2 km, the image is clean, just a little noise, everything is fine. You can see the stock patches barely pick anything up, while the extra patches still show 4 out of 5 bars. They work. 4 km. There is more noise now, but still less than on the goggles. Let's keep going. 7 km. The image on the Box Pro is much better than with the true RC setup. That makes sense. The reception area is larger. 10 km. Still quite manageable. You won't enjoy the view, but you can tell where the plane is. Right here, the goggles lost OSD. That's exactly the moment I mentioned earlier, when the pilot got distracted and pushed them up on his forehead. 17 km. The goggles are out. You have no idea where you are. No OSD. There is some image, but it's useless. You cannot recognize any objects. The Box Pro still shows something, though barely. But that's it. The signal drops off sharply with each meter. Ok, well, 17 km, an excellent result just by swapping antennas and proof that antennas are the key. Alright, one last try. Let's give the Box Pro something more serious. This time we will fit a helical antenna to the Box Pro, but only one. The second slot still has a stubby. It really doesn't make much sense at this distance, but we left it on, so we would not lose it. Let's skip straight to 7 km. From our previous flights we know. The image will stay clean, up to that point. And what do we see? There is some noise, but the picture is clear. You can tell where we are, see the altitude and recognize objects. 14 km. Yes, it's getting harder. Objects are still visible, but there is a lot of noise now. Still, remember what happened at this distance on our first flight. 17 km. The goggles no longer receive a signal. This has happened many times, as you have seen. This is the approximately limit of the patches from TrueRC. But 
Even with one helical antenna, the Box Pro continues to receive an image. 20 km. We push onto the mental limit, where the signal suddenly drops off. And then we head back. Of course, this is not a record. And for a long distance discipline, this is a small distance. But I'm happy. On a Box Pro with one antenna and 20 km? What do you think? We could draw some conclusions here. But before that, let's check how the analog module performs. As for analog, on the plane we have a Luminar Lux Mini, running at its maximum, 800 mW, which is still less power than the HD0 Freestyle. The Box Pro only has one helical antenna in the left port, the other ports, for analog, simply not used. I won't drag this out, just watch, 20 km and the picture is clean. I love HD0, it's an amazing system, but these long distances clearly aren't its strong suit. Here's the takeaway. You can fly up to 20 km on HD0 without any special prep. Just one watt and a chipset of directional antennas. Is there any difference between the HD0 receiver chip in the Box Pro and the one in the goggles? Nope. It's all down to the antennas. I hope this review helps you decide which antenna setup you should buy for your Box Pro, depending on how you plan to use it. And finally. One more thing that I want to show you, the Express LRS Backpack. As you know, HD0 released two versions of Box Pro goggles, the regular one and the Plus version. The main difference is the built-in Express LRS Backpack. It's a protocol that lets FPV gear, your radio, goggles and video receiver send simple control commands to each other. Backpack uses a small ASP chip that communicates wirelessly via SP Now a Wi-Fi based technology. Most pilots already know about Backpack because of the handy feature for syncing video channel between the goggles and the drone. Just one click on your radio and both goggles and drone instantly switch to the same channel. It's very convenient. But is that alone worth an extra $50? Honestly, I don't think so. But that's only because most pilots don't use its other cool features. For example. Backpack lets you easily start or stop DVR recording on your goggles using just a switch on your radio. You don't need to look for buttons on the goggles or get distracted from flying anymore. But that's not even the best part. The coolest thing, in my opinion, is the integration with race timing system like Rotor Hazard. Now, directly in your goggles, you can see all the important race info, lap times, current position, best lap and even the final race results. This really changes how you train in and compete, letting you fully focus on flying and improving your racing skills. So, Backpack isn't just a nice feature anymore. It's become an essential tool that makes APV racing easier, more comfortable. Is it worth paying an extra $50 for? Definitely yes. So friends, we have tested everything we could. Signal penetration, long range performance and the Backpack features. Now I want to hear from you. What did you like most? Are you ready to switch to Box Pro? Write your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to give a like if the video was helpful. See you next time. Bye.